In the last video, we showed how we made this turntable and, uh, and then actually made sure we sawed off that extra threaded rod uh, to reduce the tripping hazard. Still got to be careful standing on something like this. I've got this turntable arrangement on a 400 pound shipping scale. It's accurate plus or minus a tenth of a pound. And I've checked it, it is pretty accurate. We're really not going to use that information in this video, but I've got it there because so many people are always asking about putting gyroscopes on the balance and uh, what does it do. We're going to look into that in a, in a later video, but for this one, what I want to do is go a little further into what you can do with a bicycle wheel. Let's talk for a minute about what we're going to demonstrate. This is our bicycle wheel gyroscope. We made it in a couple of videos ago. You can go back and and see how to how to do it works pretty good you got to keep your hands out of the spokes though but when i spin this thing up using this drill here the normal spinning direction is like that which is counterclockwise relative to the camera now when it's counterclockwise if it's falling down and precessing the normal direction of precession would be like that now if it was rotating the opposite direction which would be clockwise normal direction of precession would be over this way. But my normal direction is counterclockwise like that relative to the camera. We're going to actually demonstrate those effects by changing hands. So it's counterclockwise like this. And when I change hands, see it's now clockwise. And you'll be able to see that effect. OK, we're going to spin this up again, take a, a closer look at the precession effects. Now you'll notice I can just hold this like this. It's rotating counterclockwise relative to the camera. Now, if I switch hands over here, it's now rotating clockwise relative to the camera. And it goes the other direction. Okay. Now you can see how much that makes a difference. And uh, very interesting effects. But see, without me holding it rigid, it precesses around this point here. If I hold it and I'm on a turntable like this and let it fall, now it's going clockwise looking down on me because it's rotating clockwise relative to the camera. Now it only precesses as long as it's falling. So once it's fallen and I've run out of room, it'll stop precessing. So you can see it's going clockwise now since I changed hands. And the other important thing is when the wheel is spinning, as long as it stays within the plane, it, uh, you don't get those torque effects on it. It's only when it gets bent out of that plane. It doesn't matter whether it's going straight up and down like this, straight up and down like that, or even straight through the plane on a diagonal. As long as you don't bend it like that, you don't get those torque effects. And uh, Now, it's important not to confuse weight with, with torque on this axle. When it's precessing and you're holding it on one end here, it feels like it's lighter, but it's really not. It's just you're not having to hold back on this thing twisting down like that. So, um, and, and that's an important thing to note. Now, to precess, like I just pointed out, when it's staying in a plane, you don't get that. But it's got to go down through an arc like this. You'll notice the wheel is going through an arc, so it's rotating out of the plane whether it's falling in normal precession or it's I'm forcing it up and it's going in the opposite direction, what I call anti-precession. We're going to demonstrate all that with it spinning and you'll be able to see that here in just a few minutes. Now let's try spin it up again. Okay. Now, Watch, uh, just pick it straight up and down, not twist it out of that plane, you don't get those effects. I can also, of course, there are inertial effects doing something like this. Same thing here. Let's try it. If we can do it through an angle, a little hard to do, like this. Yeah, you don't get it. You've got to get that follow an arc, like with precession, like that, or with anti-precession like this. 
So, very interesting. So we're gonna spin this up and show some of those things. And uh, let's give it a try. Okay, try to get up here on this without falling off. Um, if I try to lift this up, it's going to anti-process. It'll go this way. If I let it fall, it goes to the normal procession, which is this way, because I'm holding it. Now, if I just hold on one end, it doesn't turn me, the axle turns. So, but to go back this way, go up, go that way, go down. It's a very dramatic effect when you feel this. A bicycle wheel that's not spinning has very little resistance to deflection, like side to side like that. But when you spin it up, which we'll do here in just a second, it makes a big difference. It'll want to maintain that stability in that upright uh, position. So let's spin this thing up and see the difference. Okay, now you, if you hold one of these things, you see that? Look at that. It absolutely wants to stay stable. Doesn't want to just flop over on the side. It's it's wants to maintain that position. In fact, makes it easy to ride a bicycle, or you can roll a wheel all the way down a mountainside and it won't fall over for that stability with it spinning. Not spinning, it just falls over. We're going to take a little closer look at what I call force precession effects. That's uh, when a gyroscope is, is falling down and precessing, rotating around a central axis. Um, the uh, speed of precession is governed by an equation that has gravity in the numerator. You can find that on Wikipedia if you look up precession. And um, since gravity is in the numerator, the higher the gravity, the faster it should precess. Now, there's a link at the end of this video to an earlier one I did with uh, a tabletop gyroscope called, I believe it was Falling Gyroscope and the Effect of Gravity. Uh, may not be exactly right, but you'll see it at the end there. Um, that uh, what we did was we had a precessing gyroscope and dropped the support out from under it, looking down at it. That rotation just simply just stops. So no more speed of precession. In fact, I was surprised there was no angular momentum. I need to look at that further. But what I'm going to do here is something similar, only with this bicycle wheel. And what I'm going to do is start out with it just normally precessing and then force it down faster. And we should, that speed I'm rotating at should speed up. That would be kind of simulating a higher gravity situation. Let's spin it up and give it a try. Okay, we're going to start dropping it to do normal precession. Here we go. Now we'll speed push down harder. No comparison. Much, much faster. Very interesting. You won't get precession without it falling. And uh, as long as it's falling and precessing, it will tend to stay supported until you obviously go all the way down. Now, by forcing it up, that's going against that. So it makes it go do what I call anti-precession in the opposite direction. So we're going to give that a little bit bigger try. We looked at it a little bit earlier. Okay, we get on our turntable. 
Now I'm going to do a, what I call a forced anti-precession. Ah, I can't even stand up on it. Works real good. So, a lot of interesting effects and demonstrations you can do with a bicycle wheel and a turntable. Jack scoops are fascinating. Um, just remember, don't confuse torque on this axle with uh, weight, how much something weighs. And uh, if you're using a bicycle wheel, keep your fingers out of the spokes and uh, be careful on a turntable. You can fall off of it. So, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please uh, like the video, click on the subscribe button, and check out our other links. We'd appreciate it. And be careful, don't get your hands in the spokes or fall off the turntable.